Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hello. Hi, Imogen. You're my girlfriend. Hi. We've been together for six years. This is my podcast. This is my YouTube channel. You've recently started being an art teacher, mm -hmm. teaching young children and teaching old ladies how well, to do art. We've not done the old ladies yet, but yes, teaching kids like I'm a casual art teacher. You're now an art teacher? I look, I feel like I dress a lot like an art teacher. You're dressed too, like so. an art teacher right now. <laughs> yeah. It's um very fitting. Yeah. I thought it'd be cool to have a little casual chat about some of the things that kids have taught you, because you're working with kids of what ages? Mm, anywhere from about five to 16. Yeah. So young kids and teenagers. And I've had a few guys in my coaching program who have kids. And some of the learning lessons that we've taken from kids are absolutely freaking hilarious. Mm. I'd love to hear from you. What has teaching these kids or what has like spending more time with kids taught you so far? I think one of the things that stands out is that a lot of kids do not give a shit about your rules, especially. I respect that. <laughs> which is, I'm sure, <laughs> something that you can resonate with, Andy. Yeah. Um, but especially the younger kids, I actually find that the older that they get, they have a lot of the rules or the ideas that this isn't good or it should be different. But especially with younger kids, they will make suggestions or I will make suggestions rather and say like, oh, would we like to maybe add a bit more color here or would we like to go over this in fine liner? Like, do the thing that maybe I think most- That's like correct <laughs> in terms of art. Like I'm the art teacher, here's what I think you should do. Yeah, and maybe most people at a similar stage, like somebody a bit older who's done art for a little while would probably agree that like, oh you, yeah, you do this next. Like this is what is generally done, but you might make that suggestion and the kids are like, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah, kids don't give a fuck. So. <laughs> like kids are so great at not having preconceived notions or mm. limiting beliefs. Like you have an idea as an adult about a million things. Everyone listening right now has like a billion limiting beliefs about like this won't work. You can't do this. This is the correct way of doing it. If you do it like that, that's wrong. You know, good versus bad, right versus wrong. This is the thing you should do. You have to do it like this. That other thing won't work. And kids are just like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to draw a dog with six legs. Mm. And you're like, but dogs only have four legs. And they're like, no, my dog has six. And you're like, but that's like literally wrong. It has to have four. And they're like, no, no. <laughs> and I think the way that I like doing things, I, as much as possible, av avoid trying to tell any students what to do. Hmm. So it's like, All right, you, you can, you can leave it like that. And I think a lot of the time I do have to take a breath and be like, it's okay. This is good. This is beautiful for them. <laughs> have they been teaching you patience? Definitely. Yeah. And I think I'm probably at a place where I'm able to have more patience because I used to be a swimming teacher. That was my first job when I was like 16 and I didn't have the same level of patience. Hmm. Um, but I think I'm definitely able to give them that space to do whatever they want. And so that's, that I think has been really helpful for me too, because I, it helps break down some of the beliefs that I have around all of this stuff. That like thing, art in general or yeah, just life? The, I guess art in general is probably the where I've been applying it, but that I don't have to do things a certain way. I can I can leave things that look unfinished or messy and that's like that's okay. I might actually end up being more creative if I do stuff that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can kind of apply that to life in general. Like I hinted at before with like preconceived notions and limiting beliefs and you can't do it like this. I did a video series a while ago called I broke all the rules and it made me a success. Mm. And I talked about how much of like, man, like, especially if you go through the school system, I'm literally talking to another client about this right now. The guy whose kid has recently been diagnosed with ADHD mm. and how the school system is basically, I don't think it's done intentionally, but but basically like you got to look at it as the school system wants successful students. Mm. Like that's that's the whole point. That's what the teachers care about. It's what the education system cares about. It's definitely what the government cares about. Like they want people to be successful. And what is the easiest way of mass producing a bunch of successful people? Like what is success in society? It's just fitting in in society. Mm. And so you can see it as like the role of school or the education system is just to make people fit into society. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily for you to be individually happy. That almost like doesn't even matter. Like your individual happiness doesn't really matter. If you just never complain mm -hmm. and you just like shut up and do what you're told and just be average or normal, from an education point of view, they're like, oh cool, we succeeded. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that you're depressed and shit and you drink alcohol every single week and you have all these vices and you don't feel like you've lived an actualized life and you have regrets when you die. Like. None of that matters. Like you fit into society, which was the main goal. And so with all of that, 
that comes with a lot of like preconceived like ideas of how stuff should be done. It's like, this is the correct societal way of doing things. This is how art should be done. This is how, you know, you should have friends. This is how you should learn. This is what you should learn. It's very like handed to you as if like, this is the correct way. Mm. But the kids that you're working with, because I think they're younger or when they're younger, it's like they haven't had all that programming yet. And to be very clear, like none of that program, I'm not saying it's like nefarious. I'm not saying it's like evil or something, but yeah. it's, it's just what happens. Like the school system wants you to fit in. And I think from the perspective of like teachers and parents, like they want you obedient, to fit in. Yeah. obedient, yeah. like kids that will do what you ask is so much easier to deal with, obviously. And I feel like that's another learning lesson that I've had, mm. even when it comes to like suggestions about what they should do with their work. Like sometimes kids don't want to do what you're telling them. And sometimes it might be like, we're doing art today. And they're like, I want to sit on my phone or I want to like muck around mm. with my friends. And I think as somebody that was a very obedient, you were very obedient as a kid, kid yeah. that never got in trouble, yep. always listened. Like it was funny. I was talking to some of the kids actually, and I was like, you know, I think I did art classes like outside of school because it's a private art studio. Hmm. I think I was doing classes from the ages of like eight till eighteen. So I was like doing it for a decade, and over those ten years, I didn't really make any friends. I kind of just like shut up, sat there, did my art for two hours and then went home. Whereas a lot of these kids are quite sociable. And I love that, that <laughs> they're probably doing a lot of things that I didn't feel like I was able to do. And they make friends and they chit chat a lot. And sometimes I'm, I'm feeling like I need to get in there and be like, hey, like, what are we doing? What have we done? Come on, this have is art, <laughs> bitch. You're not here to be happy. You're here to do art, fucker. Like <laughs> and so, yeah, a lot of my personal rules, like even now when I go to like fitness classes or, or any sort of class, I'm, I'm still someone that's very studious and listens and if people like chatting or I'm even having a conversation with someone, as soon as the teacher starts talking, I'm like, okay, sh like we've got to listen now. <laughs> yeah, whereas I'm the opposite. Like that's, that's, that's very much guess. my MO and mm. it's just the way that I like conducting myself, but mm. kids, kids are always going to be like that. And it's being like, all right, like you can gently be like, hey, like we haven't, we haven't done anything in an hour. Like at some point we are here to, to do art, but also like you said, you are here to have fun. Yeah. And you feel like there's some pressure from the t the parents as well, like that the kid I'm paying for this art class for my kid because it's an after school art class to be mm -hmm. to be clear. Like parents are paying for their kids to be in this class. Mm -hmm. It's not during school; it's yeah. after school. Is there pressure from the parents of like, yo, I need you to get my kid to do art? I think some parents. So I've spoken and I've not experienced any of it personally because I've just started. But like the owner has spoken to me and she said that sometimes parents will come back with feedback of like, hey, my kid like feels like she didn't do My anything. kid fucking sucks she with didn't art and you anything. were supposed to make a little Picasso. <laughs> I'm paying you to make a Picasso, fuck out. I don't want my kid to be happy and have fun. But I think there's- to be an art. You get a whole spectrum of parents, mm. obviously, and some that are just like, my kid's having fun. Like, I don't yeah. really care. And they're very chill and they're just like happy for their kid to rock up and if they're happy and have a nice time and they can send them home. And other kids that are like, um, their parents are quite hard on them. And I actually had a girl the other day and she- is this the digital art chick? Yeah. yeah. So this girl, she's a very, very talented digital artist, but she was, we were doing acrylic. So traditional painting mm -hmm. um, with like standard paint that um, a lot of people will use. And she was maybe not as proficient with traditional medium as she would be with digital art. And then she got quite emotional and she started crying and she was getting very upset because she was saying that she was worried that her parents were going to get upset with her mm. because she'd not done a good job or she didn't want to continue and that she was wanting to go back to doing her digital art today. And so obviously that's an example of a parent that is going to maybe put more pressure on that kid and maybe sometimes that could be mm. extended to me. Again, I've not personally experienced that, but in my mind I still have the thought of like, oh, what if the parents say like, what have they done? I think that's my own um, anxiety yes, coming yeah, out yeah. though. And it's been interesting with a lot of this reflecting on my own experience doing art classes and being an art, yeah, just studying art for such a long time, thinking about how my parents mm. were and maybe what their expectations were. And I'm pretty sure like they were the parents that didn't give a shit. Again, I usually came home doing a lot of stuff, like having done a lot of stuff, but they were just like, they dropped me off. I came back, I was like, yeah, I had fun. And then I just re-enrolled every term for basically a decade because I enjoyed it. They they just wanted yeah, your to parents wanted you to be happy, kind of thing. Yeah, they yeah. wanted to facilitate me doing and improving at something that mm. I wanted to do. Yeah, it's funny how many rules there are in the art world, and something that's meant to be creative, like it's a very creative space. Obviously, it's mm. creativity in art and photography and music and all of that. But there's so many rules, and that's mm. 
where this conversation kind of started, like kids just don't have those rules yet. And so they're much more free to express. You see this in music a lot. It's like the kids will play the wrong note, like literally out of pitch. And you go, ah, like that reaction. It's like, oh, your guitar's not tuned. But the kid's like, I like it. Mm. It's almost like you build up all these rules that say there's only a certain way that you're allowed to like your creative expression. Or it's like, be as creative as you want within these predefined parameters. So can I do something that's considered wrong? Can I fucking, you know, I, I mean, you see this a lot with like abstract or modern art mm. where people obviously that's probably the type of art that's judged the most modern yeah, art. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it shouldn't be that I could do that at home. Anyone could do that. You know, like what's that guy, Jackson Pollock, mm. that it's very easy to look at his stuff and go like, ah, oh, that's wanky. I could do that myself, blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't do it like this. You should be blah, 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 blah. I kind of had the same thing with photography when I was in, I'm still into photography, but when I was really going hard and doing my 365 project, a lot of my photography is very heavily photoshopped. Mm. Like it's not just I'm clicking the camera. I photoshop. I will spend like 12 hours in Photoshop making the photo. It's basically a whole creative process. It was more a Photoshop project than a photography project. Yeah. It's you. like, yes, yes, yes. And I had quite a lot of people that were like, you're cheating. Real photographers just click a button and that's it. No editing. You're not allowed to do anything after that. And it's like, but I'm not being a photographer. I'm not trying to be a photographer. Like I'm doing photography and Photoshop. I'm doing photo manipulations. Like I'm manipulating the photo. That's the part of it that's fun for me. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of like almost like gatekeeping or like these are the rules and you have to follow it. There's definitely that with BDSM. You and I have talked about that. Mm -hmm. People have a lot of preconceived notions of what BDSM has to be and mm -hmm. how your sex life should be. There's definitely that with dating. So many people have so many rules. Like you can't just give a compliment to a woman because then she'll get a big ego. You can't be honest with people because then they'll think less of you. And it's like kids don't have those rules yet. They haven't learned that or they haven't been programmed, I guess you would say, with those rules. And so it's like they're completely innocent and they're just playing for the sake of it. It's kind of beautiful to see. It's like they'll just do whatever they feel like yeah. without all the rules of like, I can't do that. That's wrong. I shouldn't do that. Yeah, it very much is. And that's definitely something that I'm learning through this like process. you're learning that from because you're very judgmental about your own art you're oh, very critical about your own insanely art. so and i think something on i even notice <laughs> when i'm teaching is that the thoughts will come up like i have a lot of thoughts of like and I, i'm obviously never going to voice them and i do everything i can to just observe the thoughts but then mm. not let that affect my actions mm. but like that's technically good that's not as good this kid's better than like that you're kid. judging the kids as they're just yeah. Yeah. As I would. And that, with that's my how own the brain work. works. Yeah. The brain, the ego wants to judge. It wants to say good versus bad. Of course. And I think if most people would put, you know, two paintings of the same thing done by kids side by side, if one's te technically more proficient than the other, one's a better creation of an image, you're like, that's good, <coughs> that's bad. That kid's mm. better than the other kid. And I think something that I've also noticed is that kids are definitely seeking a lot of praise and want to be told, mm. like, this is good, you've done a good job. They want theirs. And I had this when I was a student. They want theirs to be held up by the teacher and have every and have the teacher say, "Hey, cup, every, cup, hey everyone, look at yeah. this! Look how good a job they've done!" Like it, we're seeking that. I was seeking that so, yeah, so, that so much. Yeah, that external fucking validation. <laughs> I just did a podcast earlier this morning, like an hour or two ago, about like not seeking external val. Like external validation is great, but happiness comes from within. Happiness mm. is like self love and gratitude and all of that. But yeah, it's funny from a very young age, like they're rewarded. You get a pat on the head if you do a good job mm -hmm. and then you get that sweet, sweet external, you know, validation. And then you become like almost like a little baby cow, a baby calf trying to suck it like the teat mm -hmm. of validation. You're like, mm, mommy, mm. oh, please let me suck on that validation. Let me give that. Mm. Mm. And we become like hungry and desperate, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. desperate for that fucking validation. And we can't live or it feels like we can't live without it. And it's funny how you're getting to see them like start that process. Yeah, it is also funny too. It's it's very interesting seeing the the differences in the different ages and then mm, mm. there does seem to be some patterns. But the younger kids, if you tell them they've done something well, even if they don't really like it, they'll be like, oh, okay, no, it must be good. But it's interesting as the kids get- Because you're get, like the expert or the adult, yeah. yeah. Yeah, as the kids get older though, like the teenagers, the, um, the students in high school, if they don't like something and you tell them they've done a good job, you're not going to be able to convince them as mm. easily. And obviously you, Andy, know that that's something that if I don't like something that I've produced, no amount of your encouragement or praise is going to change anything. You won, yeah, for full context, you won a $6,000 art prize for an artwork that you did. Mm. 
and you had a room full of like, what, 50 people there taking photos, telling you how beautiful it is, telling you how good it is. You had me there. You had Bronwyn, the girl that we've been seeing for a year and a half. She was there. We were both there and we're like, holy fuck, Imogen, we told you that you're great. And after all of that, you're like, no, nah, this painting sucks. And how, was, what it like two days, was it yesterday? Yesterday, we're lying in bed because mm. the painting is over the bed, like in front of the bed. Mm. We're lying in bed, just cuddling for an hour or so. I'm playing with your hair. I'm looking at the painting and I'm like, that really, I can see why this one, this is a really beautiful painting. And I've said that to you like a hundred times over the last like year. Mm. And you're still like, nah, it sucks. I, hate I don't, it. I don't say that. I you're don't like, say nah, that. It wasn't, okay, you say it wasn't the best painting. It shouldn't have won. That's what you say. And it's like, it's not about being the, anyway, this is a separate discussion. <laughs> it's not about being the best. It's just, does someone like it? Mm. Yes. Cool. It was good enough. Yeah. And do you like it? And you kind of can't see that when we judge like art or anything else, mm. we judge ourselves or we judge other people. You're often just looking at one metric, like aesthetically, how does this look mm. to me? Mm. Very subjective. And how are the brush strokes? Are they technically correct? It's like, what about the intangible shit? How much love went into that painting? Did the kid have fun when they were making it? Are they happy when they're making it? Because I would care more about that. Are you happy while you're making this? Mm. Or are you making perfect artwork that everyone loves? And then you become like the jaded celebrity or the jaded artist who's like, I'm not satisfied. I'm just trying to chase views and validation and people liking me, but I'm not doing what I want to do. Yeah, everything is so, so subjective. Like to... Mm ideas stemming from that come to mind. It's like one, I actually, one of the first classes I did was like a school holiday workshop and a few parents sat in and also did the task like with That's the cool. kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I was really nervous being around the parents because I feel like there's more expectations there and maybe they have more judgments, but that's, that's just maybe in my own head. And so I was very like anxious and mm. maybe it wasn't obvious, but I was like, I had a lot of thoughts around the parents there and I'd be like, shit, I need to be attending to like their kids more and making, <laughs> <laughs> like making- they slept. They slip you a little 50 and they're like, here you go, pay special attention to my kid. You're like, okay, shh, shh, thank you. All right, I'll, I'll make sure your kid does so really good. It wasn't that, but I definitely felt that pressure there. And throughout the class, I was like, oh, I hope I was doing a good job. Like there was one point where the mom was like, oh, hey, can my kid get like an extra pencil or some extra paint? Like they don't have any yet because I was having to hand out it to like, I don't know, 30 kids or something like that. And I was like, oh my God, shit. Like I'm doing a I bad job. Up. You know what? I can't do this. You know what? And, it and was, you just immediately quit and walk out. And it was funny, like a week later, the um, the owner came back and she passed on some feedback and she was like, yeah, the parents said it was amazing. And they you said did a you great did job. such a great job of handing that kid that pencil. And they were really impressed. So funny that like, you you know, you have this perception of how things are going and these, yeah. these own thoughts, but like, it's, it's really not reality. Like, your thoughts are not reality. Like if everyone takes away one thing, your thoughts are not reality. Yeah. And so I'm, I was there at that time kind of being a little bit in my own head and obviously being aware of that, trying to um, not <laughs> just observe it, not necessarily act on it. Mm. And the parents probably there being like, this is nice. This is a nice art class. I think my kids are having fun at this workshop. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I guess the other thing from what you were saying before is that, yeah, it is so subjective. One, one person's idea of what's good can be so, so different. Like every time that we go to a gallery together, because we like going to galleries quite a lot we almost always consistently have very different favorites because we like yeah, being like, which like is your favorite in the gallery? Yeah. And you pick something and I'm like, I love that you love that. Because <laughs> we're, we're trying not to, I guess, verbally be as critical with our words to be like, that's shit, I don't know why you like that. But um, my, my preferences differ enormously to yours. And what I think is the best work or the nicest work in a gallery you'll often feel the opposite. And so mm. I think it's recognizing that too, that everybody's going to see the the beauty in, in different things. So it, it's been, it's been really helpful because, you know, I've not worked for somebody else like in a, in a job, but it is, it doesn't feel like a job a lot of the time, mm. but it is a job where I get paid and I'm working for somebody as a teacher. And it's interesting noticing how that feels because it's, mm. it's been quite a few years because I've been in the business with you for a while and technically self-employed. So it's felt, it's been nice to have that change of pace and be open to all the lessons that it can give me. It's nice working it when you don't need it. Like you don't need this job. You're doing it because we were in an art gallery, mm. ironically, the same art gallery where you, it's not ironic, but it, coincidentally, the same art gallery where you won the $6,000 art prize. And you saw a little advertisement saying, hey, would you like to be a casual after school art teacher? And you were like, oh, maybe I'll apply to that. 
Is it nice working a job when you don't need the money and you don't need the job? Yeah. You're doing like you can leave at any point. You have complete abundance mentality. It's like, yeah, I'll do this when I enjoy it. If I don't enjoy it, I'll go somewhere else. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's actually probably one of the first jobs where I'll go, and then afterwards I'm like, I had so much fun. That was yeah. great. Yeah, like that, that was a really nice time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's actually funny, like talking to the kids a little bit about that because they, you know, they ask random questions sometimes about like why you're doing it. And somebody the other day, a kid asked like, oh, why, why are a lot of the teachers really young? Or yeah, that was the question. And I was like, well, I guess generally- old people can't do art for shit. <laughs> <laughs> so to be, to be clear, there's like a few younger teachers that are probably in their early twenties like me. And this is just like an extra side thing that they do. Mm. And then the other end of like teachers that are maybe in their fifties plus that are almost like retirees. And this is yep. just like a random little- side thing that they do. And I'm like, well, I guess I hadn't thought about it, but anybody that's like middle-aged, say like 30 through to 50, probably feels like they need an actual career. Yeah. Like this, this wouldn't pay the bills because it's only a few days a week after school, right? Yeah. And it's only like a couple of hours and that they'd probably need a job job. So you're probably not getting those people. Mm. And I thought that was interesting because yeah, it did make me think like, oh, I don't, I don't need this. And then the kid actually responded to my comment on that. And she was like, yeah. And they're like more fussy. And I was like, well, actually like, no, I've, I'm only here because this is something that I really want to do. Like I wouldn't just pick a random job for the sake of it. And so mm. there is like, I guess a gratitude there. You're the fussy one. Yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah, I, yeah. I get to be somewhere purely because I really, really like it. Yeah. Both of like what we're doing and you working with me on the business for everyone listening, we build this business not that i think of this as a business but like this youtube channel my spotify my blog all of that my coaching my coaching is the business part mm. um this channel is more just like a fun thing it feels nice that i get to sit down in front of this camera and talk about whatever the fuck i want to talk about we had this conversation this morning literally like fucking 20 minutes ago 30 minutes ago when we were walking here mm. and i literally you we were talking about this. I said, do you want to come and sit down and record a little casual chat about your new art job? And we can talk about what you've learned on the job. And maybe some people will find that interesting or useful. And you were like, uh, but would your audience like give a shit? Would they care? And I was like, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Like, I love you guys, but like, I'm going to talk about whatever the fuck I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if you guys want me to talk about something, you can tell me and I'll do videos on it. If you have questions, you can put them in the comments, mm -hmm. like all of that, of course. And you know, if I don't ever cover a topic, just like hit me up for one of the $200 coaching calls or something like, but I am then also on top of that going to talk about whatever I want to talk about. Mm. And I'm really grateful for that. It's like I, the times when I believe the lie that I need money or that I need something from you guys and girls, it's very stressful. Mm. Like, and that's how most people are, or a lot of people are at their jobs. They're like, I need this job. I, I can't afford to lose this job. And it's like, holy fuck. So your boss not that your boss is doing this to you, you're doing this yourself, but it's like you're putting a leash, a collar and a leash around yourself. You're putting chains on yourself and then handing the leash to your boss and saying, here you go, boss, I'll be your slave. And your boss might even be like, I don't want to control you. And you're like, no, nah, boss, like I need this job. I'm going to be your fucking slave boss. And your boss is like, okay, I guess you're my slave then because you believe you need the job and you'll be fucked if they ever don't hire you, if they ever don't, if they ever fire you, you'll be fucked. And it's like, you no, know, you'll just go and find another job. You'll be fine. That's what humans do. They get fired. They go find another job to pay the bills. And <clears throat> for the most part, there are times when I believe that lie of like, oh, fuck, we need money. We need coaching. We need people to come to the program. Ah, mm. But there's most of the time I don't believe that. And I'm just sitting here feeling grateful and happy that we get to just talk about whatever the hell we want. Two retards in beautiful pink and yellow beanies talking about sex, dating, spirituality, happiness, relationships, love, mm. money, business, losing weight, goals. Yeah, there's a lot so to be grateful a... for. Hell yeah. So that is what these little tykes have taught you in the art world. Mm. And everything we said applies to life. Yeah, you were saying before that people often have a lot of rules about yeah. BDSM or dating, but like it really applies to anything. Like people have rules about family and, and friendships. Business. And business. Looks, appearances, health. People got opinions on everything. <laughs> yeah. And like ways that it should be done and mm. has to be done. And it's like those limiting beliefs often just hold you back. Mm. And I think the biggest lie that people believe is that things have to be quote good. Mm. And that when you first start something new, you have to be good at it. 
And so if you've never done art, you have to be good before you can do art. If you've never talked to a woman before ever, like gone outside and hit on her, you have to be good. The first woman you walk up to and hit on in the street when you're probably terrified and shitting your pants and shaking and nervous and afraid that she's going to bite your head off, you have to somehow be good at that. Mm. It's like, how the fuck would you ever be good at that? Or, you know, if you have erectile dysfunction, you have to just be good at sex. Or if you're a virgin, you have to be good the first time. Mm. It's like, how would you even be good at that? Or if you're about to start a business, you have to have a really good product or service. That's the biggest fucking lie is like, you have to have your product or service already nailed and perfect mm. before you go out and start offering it to people. <clears throat> it's like, that's not how that works. You're yeah. probably going to suck. It's almost inevitable that it will improve over time. Like you're Correct. not going to have a perfect thing from the get go. You can try and obviously you can try and make it as good as you possibly can, but there is, especially with services going to be a gradual improvement as you are in the business longer yeah. and come up with more ideas and ways for it to, to be improved. And that's, yeah. Absolutely the case with like the coaching. I know that's something that we've spoken about quite I a lot. I is... so bad at coaching at the start. Holy crap. <laughs> I feel like that's probably being a little bit harsh on yourself, but there's been so much evolution and growth as you've, you've evolved yourself and as you've worked with more people and learned new things because, you know, your clients are teaching you stuff all of the time as mm. well. And I know mm. some of your very first clients, you said there were lots of big learning lessons about your own ego and your own stories and the way that things should be done. I your... had preconceived notions, yeah, mm. as a coach, 100% on what my clients should do and what would be the correct way to help them and all of that, yeah. Mm. And this has slowly been a process over years of letting all of that go. Mm. And I did a coaching call yesterday with a, a dude, one of the $200 coaching calls. And... He said, like, towards the end of the call, he's like, hey, I was just, I just remembered what you said at the start of the call. And I just want to say I'm really grateful for the way that you said it. And what I said, and I've had other people tell me this too. They really like this. The first thing I say when someone jumps on a coaching call with me, like the first coaching call is I say, what would you like from me? Hmm. Like, what can I do for it? What would you like from me? And he said, I really like that because you didn't come with like, like you didn't have an agenda basically you were just like what do you need because some people need a motivational pep talk some people need permission to go for their goals some of you might need or might want me to just fucking listen for an hour or two and love you like you literally just want to be heard and loved and understood mm -hmm. other people want to know that they're not alone other people want literal actionable advice like autistic fucking step by step what's step one what's step two what's step three what's step four and if i sit there and try and guess what you might want or i try and be the expert I have all these preconceived notions about what you should do or what you should want. I can't actually help you. I can't listen to you. So you've definitely been doing that a lot with the art stuff is like, how can I listen to these kids and ask them what they want instead of what I think they should have or what their parents think they should have, or what the right thing to do is. So yeah. Yeah. If people want more help with this, obviously I have coaching. If they want help being an art, I can help you be an art. If you want. Yeah. If you want help having sex, I can help you be a sex. What if they want help with relationships? I can do that. I can help you be a relationship. I can help you be a business. That's the only thing I've said so far that makes sense. You can actually be a business, yes. If you want help being a good body, I can help you with that. For full disclosure, I don't have a great body right now. I have a good enough body, but I don't look like a god. So, But there's people in the coaching group that can help you. We've got coaches that can help you with that. So... I will leave a link in the description to the coaching program. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being an art. Thanks for listening to my art things. Thanks for listening to my art thing. Do you reckon mm. I might put some, I might put some pictures of your art up. I might my edit this art. video. No, no. Yeah. I'm going to put all your art up and see how, and see how beautiful and like insecure she gets of her art. And when I show the art on the screen, you guys and girls are going to be like, wow, she's so fucking talented. Why is she like insecure about her art? And mm. that shows you that, Behind every great artist, there might be a lot of insecurities. Behind every confident woman that you see, there's probably a lot of insecurities. Be behind every fucking supposed alpha male that you see is probably a lot of insecurities. We're all human. We all have insecurities. Yeah. None of us are perfect. You're all doing a fantastic job. We love you all. Mm -hmm. Fucking much love. Kisses and hugs. I got a coaching call in three minutes. I'm going to go have fun with that. Okay, bye. Thanks, um, everyone. Goodbye. Okay, goodbye. Bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs>